Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to Civilization VI. So, in the last uh, episode, we finished our Norway campaign. Uh, we played it on uh, King difficulty, if I remember correctly. But I can uh, check the difficulty here. Uh, yeah, we were on King. So every time we've done a series, I've upped the difficulty. So we're going to up the difficulty to Emperor this time. Uh, however, I thought I would do something interesting and, and pretty fun. So I uh, installed a mod. And um, you may uh, recognize this uh, <laughs> at Westeros. So this is called a Sieve of Ice and Fire. It's a mod for uh, Civilization VI that turns it into Game of Thrones. I thought that would be fun. We're going to dial it up to Emperor difficulty, set it to online speed, go into our advanced setup. So we're using the uh, rule set from A City of Ice and Fire, A Civ of Ice and Fire, I mean. Uh, it starts in the ancient era, nine city-states. Uh, it uses a uh, true start location map of Westeros, uh, map size standard. Uh, standard victory conditions, score, religious, domination, and culture victories. I don't like score victories. Um, I don't like score victory. We're gonna turn that off, and uh, I want to make sure that uh, there's no time limit, no turn limit. Not that it matters. I'm one, somebody will win by then. Yeah, no duplicate leaders. Definitely, uh, definitely need that because we're using the leaders from uh, from from Game of Thrones. So uh, if I click on this, we have a bunch of different people. Now I should uh, let everyone know off the bat that I have I do not know very much about Game of Thrones. I've neither read the books nor have I watched Game of Thrones. I only know what I know from the internet. So I do know who these people are. Well, who most of these people are. I know who Cersei is. I know Daenerys. I know Eddard Stark. I know Euron Greyjoy. I know Jon Snow. Of course, everyone knows Jon Snow. Who knows nothing? I know roughly who Peter Baelish is. I've heard the name. I know who Robert Baratheon and Stannis Baratheon are, and I've heard of Tywin Lannister. So, <laughs> uh, I know nothing. Um, I, I might play as Jon Snow, but I don't really like the sound of his, uh, of his stuff. Let's go through real quick for you people who uh, enjoy uh, Game of Thrones and know about it, and we'll take a quick look at everybody's um, specials so that you can maybe li leave in the comments if you think that those uh, special abilities are, are accurate. So, Balin Greyjoy, uh, the Iron Price, his naval units get plus 10 combat strength in shallow water, and he builds encampment in Iron Harbor districts in half the time. Uh, House Greyjoy, we do not sow. Uh, ability to enter ocean tiles after researching shipbuilding. Naval melee units heal in neutral territory. That's that's taken from Norway. Uh, forms fleets and armadas earlier than usual. So that stuff's taken from Norway. Plus one movement for naval units built in a dockyard. Plus one trade route capacity. And he gets uh, the Iron Fleet, unique ancient era naval melee unit that can capture enemy ships. Cersei Lannister, the Mad Queen, declaring a surprise war only counts as a formal war for the purpose of warmongering and war weariness, and she gains the Alchemist unit when they, uh, she unlocks Apprenticeship. Harry Aurora receives a second Red Cloak each time she trains a Red Cloak, and she gets the Hall of Heroes building. 50% extra combat experience for all ranged and melee units trained in the city, and plus one gold. Uh, she has the Red Cloak, which is a, basically a better swordsman, and she gets the Alchemist. Now, I know what this is from Game of Thrones. It's basically uh, Wildfire. The Alchemist is a medieval era unit that, that 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 gets nuclear. It's a nuclear unit in the medieval era. That's crazy. That's crazy. So it's a melee ranged nuclear warhead unit. That's ridiculous. Anyway, that's Cersei Lannister. Daenerys gets dragons. Uh, classical era light cavalry unit. Expensive to maintain, very powerful. Breaker of Chains, after researching bronze working, all found or conquered cities receive a free anti-cav unit. Against the unsullied unique unit. Blood of Fire, each capital city under your control provides plus one influence point per turn. Receive two envoys after conquering a capital city or city state. It sounds like Daenerys is based on going after people's capitals quickly and just capturing everyone's cities. Doran Martell, I've never heard of this guy, I have no idea who he is. Dornish Master Plan, Dornish Districts provide plus one great person point of their type. Unbowed, unbent, unbroken, House Martell, one culture and one production from Desert Tiles. Combat victories provide culture to 50% of the combat strength for the defeated unit. That's all. That's a pretty... Um, that bonus is also uh, a civic, if I remember correctly, or yeah, it's one of the military civics. 
Uh, Dornish Water Garden, unique uh, replacement for the Aqueduct. It gives you culture per citizen and great person point of each type. Plus, it has plus two housing in addition to whatever housing it gives you, based on what the city is like. Um, and she gets the Sand Snake, a medieval era unit that replaces the Pikeman. Ten combat strength bonus when fighting on coast. Five combat strength when fighting on neutral or foreign territory. So you could get a 15 combat strength bonus fighting on the coast of a new foreign territory. Eddard Stark, obviously know who he is. Ours is the old way. All units receive five combat strength on their home continent and have a bonus of four combat strength against players following other religions. Winter is coming. Tundra and Snow Tiles provide faith and production in addition to a standard adjacency bonus for Holy Site districts, uh, which is really nice. If, if It looks like Eddard Stark is really all about building that religion. Extra territory upon founding cities, which is also nice. Uh, the Weirwood Tree uh, appears to be a building in the Holy Site. Allows the purchasing of missionaries. Missionaries can only purchase with faith. Holy Site districts get an also addition, an additional standard adjacency from woods. The Bannerman, House Stark, unique ancient era melee unit that replaces the warrior. Does not suffer combat penalties when damaged. Sounds a bit like uh, Japan. Edmure Tully. Don't know who he is. River Lords. Construct districts 100% faster, which sounds amazing. Gain plus one food and plus one culture on titles adjacent to rivers. House Tully. Family duty honor. Eureka's an inspiration. 60% of civics and technology instead of 50%. That's taken from China. Tully Watergate. A unique building to House Tully. Replaces the mill and increases the strength of your outer defenses, which is interesting. Uh, the Long Bowman, House Tully, unique era, ancient area ranged unit that replaces the Archer, ignores the movement cost for crossing rivers. So he's all about rivers. I mean, River Lords is pretty obvious. Euron Greyjoy, the Storm, receive a second Iron Fleet or Reaver each time you train one, gain the Iron Reaver unique unit when you unlock shipbuilding. So this is an alternate, uh, he's an alternate leader for House Greyjoy. Uh, the same stuff as the other Greyjoy, only he has the Iron Reaver uh, unique. Classical era naval unit, ranged unit when led by Euron. Then we have Jon Snow, um, also of House Stark. Missionaries and apostles can spread religion two extra times, and all apostles gain the heathen conversion promotion. Gain the wildling unique unit when they unlock civil service. So again, Jon Snow is about, all about religion. He's more about uh, spreading his religion rather than generating faith, which appears to be what Eddard Stark's about in this game, in this mod. Uh, Winter is coming. It's the same as uh, the other Stark. Uh, Weirwood Tree, uh, same as, again, Bannerman, same, and then Wildlings. Uh, plus four, four movement if this unit starts in enemy territory, plus seven combat strength when attacking, minus seven when defending. So it's basically a Berserker. And then we have Elena Tyrell. I've heard of Tyrell, but I am not familiar with this woman. Queen of Thorns. Your trade routes to other civs provide plus four gold for House Tyrell. Other civilizations trade routes to House Tyrell provide plus two food for them and plus two gold for House Tyrell. Sounds really great. Really great for um, trading. If you're going to do an inter international trade, uh, Olena Tyrell is good. Growing strong, plus one food from both plains and grass tiles, plus 51% improved city growth for tiles of the campus. So it looks like Olena Tyrell is all about growing uh, cities as well as uh, getting money from international trade. Tyrell Granary, double the bonus, again, good for, for that. And Rainbow Guard, unique medieval era unit that replaces the swordsman and heals every turn even after moving a combat. So that sounds pretty cool. Then there's Peter Baelish, we're almost at the end of this. Re Littlefinger, receives capacity to build an extra spy with the drama and poetry civic. As high as honor, House Aaron. Mountains provide double adjacency bonus for campus and holy site districts. May declare war on anyone at war with their allies without warmonger penalties. So that's really good if you've got a lot of mountains. The brothel is his version of the marketplace. Provides plus two amenities and plus one culture in addition to the usual benefits. That's a really good upgrade to the market. Uh, amenities for a building that, like that is really, really awesome. Knight of the Vale, House Aaron unique medieval era heavy cav unit that replaces the knight, can move over hills faster and has plus 10 combat strength when fighting on hill tiles. Then we have Robert Baratheon, which I think is the most interesting guy. Um, I know he was the king, right? Before he got killed or something like that. Uh, seven Kingdoms, One Fist. Cannot train settlers. He's basically Venice, but receives plus six influence points per turn and plus 10% culture, faith, food, gold, production, and science per city-state you're the suzerain of. So basically, Robert Baratheon is all about being the suzerain of everything. Gain the Kingsguard unit when they unlock the Ironworking tech. Ours is the Fury. Provides House Baratheon with a copy of Horse and Iron Resources if you have revealed them but do not own them. And Tournament Grounds, a building unique to House Baratheon. Replaces the arena and provides double the amenity bonus and additional plus two food. 
His Kingsguard is a replacement for the Swordsman that is stronger. And he gets this thing called the King's Landing Settler. I'm pretty sure they did this as a workaround so that Robert can only get the one Settler at the beginning of the game. And because it's true start locations, you're just going to settle it immediately. Uh, it, it cannot be... It can be used to found cities, but can't be purchased or built, which means it's just going to give you one at the beginning, and that's all you're going to get. Then you got Stannis Baratheon. He has Azor Ahi Reborn, or however you pronounce it. City center buildings and encampment district buildings can be bought with faith, which sounds cool. Apostles can choose from any possible promotion instead of receiving a random one. The same hours as the Fury that Robert Baratheon had. Uh, Pyre of Rilor, a building unique to House Baratheon of Dragonstone. Replaces the monument and provides plus two faith in addition to the usual bonus. So a little bit of extra faith there. Uh, good for founding the re a religion first. House Baratheon of Dragonstone, unique classical era support unit, the Red Priest. It's basically a medic. No, it's not a medic. Yes, it is. It's uh, a heals unit. So it's a medic, but it's also the um, conquistador from Spain. Uh, if it's if it captures a city or is adjacent to a ca city when it's captured, the city automatically converts to your religion. Uh, which is just like Spain's uh, conquistador. Then we have Tywin Lannister. Lannister always pays his debts. Units have minus two maintenance, which is going to make a lot of them free, and plus 20% gold in all cities. So if you're going to have a big military, this guy will make that military cost very little. Uh, he gets a second right cloak every time he trains one, and he has the Hall of Heroes just like Cersei did. House Lannister, you know, red cloaks are a replacement for the swordsmen that are stronger than the swordsmen. Now, I know nothing about uh, most of these people and what they do in Game of Thrones, but I do know that Robert Baratheon is so unique that I cannot not play as him. So we're going to start a match. We're going to pl be playing as Robert Baratheon. House Baratheon. Uh, uh, King Robert, you defeated Rhaegar Tar Tar Targaryen at the Battle of the Trident and claimed the Iron Throne after the rebellion named after you came to a close. You hold King's Landing, the ancient seat of Aegon the Conqueror. Feared, respected, and coveted by all, can you control the Seven Kingdoms and create a lasting peace? All right, here we are in Westeros. Uh, we have our King's Landing settler, and I know that image there is the Iron Throne. Um, so since this is true start locations, we're going to uh, settle it right here. Since this is the actual in-game location, in-world location of uh, King's Landing, I suppose. All right, so there we go. We have King's Landing. Now I can, I can, kind of figure out which Civ Robert Baratheon has replaced by looking at his uh, palace. I, but I don't actually know, remember which which Civ in the base game this palace belongs to. But uh, if you know, let me know because that that would let us know which uh, Civ this guy's replaced. It's going to be very interesting to see how this works. I, of course, don't know much, anything about Game of Thrones, really, so I don't know the layout of Westeros. So we're going to be, I'm going to be exploring this without actually knowing, um, you know, where stuff is. Or I feel like, oh, come on, really? Having a knowledge of uh, Game of Thrones would make this uh, easier. Okay, so we can't make... Oh, that's how we did it he made the city require a, a population of 99 in order to build this which means you can never build it so I get it that's why you you can never get this uh, so that's how he limited uh, Robert Baratheon to one city that's cool that's kinda neat um, I'm gonna build a scout I always build scout first whether that's always a good idea or not I don't know but I always do it um, what do we want now well, we've got this cotton here, and we've also got this citrus. So we need irrigation to get uh, both of those. So we're going to have to go for irrigation, um, which means we definitely want to get pottery first. Yep, pottery first so that we can get to irrigation uh, quickly, so that we can get this plantation, so that we can get our two uh, luxuries. All right, let's go. Next turn. We've also tech boosted sailing because we've founded a city on the coast. All right, warriors. Ooh, I've discovered another continent. Interesting. Let's take a look at the continent um, field. So this continent is called the Crown Lands, and I have just discovered Reach. And up here we have 
more of the crown lands. Okay, so if you know Game of Thrones, you probably know what the Reach is. I do not, but this is Reach. <laughs> I'm sure that somebody will know which civ, which civ is down there just by that. This is going to be fun for me, though. It's going to be fun to read the comments. Uh, and I hope you comment. If you know what's going on. Let me know what's going on. There's a thing here. Why is there a thing there? There's barbarians down here. Ooh, diamonds. Not that I'll be able to get them. I need to find city-states. That's what I really need to do. I need to find city-states quickly so that I can um, become suzerain of them because I'm going to gain envoys real quick. I need to kill this scout, though. Let's fortify. This barbarian scout needs to die so he can't find me. Oh, come on. Reconnaissance units like scout. No okay. man ever wet. No, I don't need you to tell me about that. Because I ooh, there's a lot of forest down here. One, two, and three. This would be a really nice location for a um, a holy site, since I don't have mountains around me. Okay, so we have pottery. Uh, now we can go ahead and get irrigation to boost it from a resource. Yeah, I need to get a, a builder for that. Um, probably just going to build it straight up. I mean, it would be better to, to uh, get animal husbandry and then build a camp on the, uh, on the horses. But I don't have a builder. And before I get either of these... I am going to get myself. Well, if there's barbarians about, I probably need to get a sling. I also want one so that I can um, boost archery. All right, at least the scout's not coming up here. Let's head down this way and see what's up. Nothing much. Let's send our scout up here. See what's up that way. Any more continents? Nope. We're still in the crown lands and we still got whatever reach is. I mean, I understand why this is called crown lands. I mean, King's Landing is the seat of the crown of... Oh, there we go. There's the barbarians. Mercury here. Rice over there. Is this all still... Well, actually, it looks like there's another continent over here. Continent none. Interesting. I wasn't aware that was a thing. For that to be a nun, no continent. Enacting new policies and Come on, stop wisdom. telling me about this stuff. Let's enact some policies. Um, plus five strength when fighting barbarians. And I always equip God King. Because getting that faith, uh, that trickle of faith is what allows you to f me to found a religion. Holy cow. We're already going to get an envoy. That seven influence per turn is nuts. We're going to stalemate against this barbarian, and I don't really think that our our warrior can take him down. But if I send my slinger over here, it might be enough. I'm going to leave my warrior on the, the hill. He'll gain defensive bonuses from that, so uh, he should be okay. We'll keep sending my scout over this way, and uh, I need another scout. I always buy multiple scouts like this, so... Who knows if it's the best way to go, but it's what I do. Um, craftsmanship or foreign trade. I mean, it allows the creation of trade routes. I need foreign trade. And it's been boosted because I discovered a continent so quickly. It seems like the Westeros map has broken up its continents based on, like, the territory that's owned by different factions and... In Game of Thrones? Is that the way I my get liege. it? We well, I can't use my envoy because I haven't discovered any city-states. And wow, he took like no damage. So yeah, being up on this hill and fortified is uh, of course a, a really good thing. Oh, good lord. We're going to send this <laughs> so loud. We're going to send a slinger down there and we're going to keep sending our, our scout around to try and find something useful. This is a big map, I already know. I think it's, what did you guys say, 96 by 100 and something? So it's pretty large. Um, and we'll see how we get on. 
very interesting play style that Robert Baratheon is going to have since I actually cannot build cities. Even though this territory here would be amazing for a whole bunch of cities. So, I um, hope you've enjoyed this first episode. I hope you enjoyed looking at the setup and uh, looking at each of the the Civ's um, uh, specials. Uh, I'm definitely interested. And uh, I hope you enjoy this series, uh, whether you're a fan of Game of Thrones or not. I think this is going to be uh, quite interesting. Let me know in the comments what you think about my choice of playing as Robert Baratheon. And if you know a lot about Game of Thrones, let me know uh, what I can expect. Anyway, thank you so much. Join the Discord if you're interested in chatting there. And um, I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.